Does anyone remember Funko Land? It was a used game store that was bought out by Barnes & Noble in 2000, around the time Barnes & Noble also owned GameStop. I got a bunch of my games from Funko Land, with Super Smash Bros. being the last one. Interesting fact about my Funko Land, it closed not due to the Barnes & Noble buyout, but because a heavy snowfall caused the roof of the building to collapse. Now, it was torn down and then turned into a Toys R Us. But like, four, five years after that, the same thing happened. And now that area is a TD Bank and a CVS, both of which will probably have the same thing happen to them, because I am convinced that this plot of land is cursed by some sort of vengeful ice spirit. Anyways, why don't we start talking about Smash Brothers? Super Smash Bros. is probably the weirdest fighting game in terms of general mechanics, because this series isn't normally about beating up your opponents until they run out of health. It's about knocking them off the stage you're currently on. See, Smash Bros. is like a combination of a fighting game and a platformer. You run freely around the stage, jump around, and knock the daylights out of people. Attacking is done by pressing the A or B buttons. A is your normal attacks, while B is your special attacks. Adding a control stick direction leads to an assortment of different attacks, and tilting the control stick at the same time you press the A button will lead to a smash attack. A charging attack that does more damage than normal attacks and also has stronger knockback. Another good way of getting your opponents off the stage is by throwing them, which does damage but is mainly used for hurling your opponent's long distances. But it's not all about your fist and powers, or in Samus and Link's case, weapons. There's various items and power-ups that will randomly appear on the stage. These have different effects and all do the same thing they did in their game of origin. The hammer wrecks everything in its path, Pokeballs have random Pokemon come out to attack, and the bomb bomb <laughs> you know, blows things up. The last factor in your moveset is the shield. It's a bubble that blocks everything except grabs, but not forever, as it shrinks over time and when attacks are blocked. After too much time or damage has occurred with the shield out, it will break, leading to the character being temporarily stunned. While you are shielding, you can press the control stick in different directions to dodge attacks. While you are dodging, you are completely invincible, which makes it a good way to avoid damage. Now, damage is represented by a percentage, which raises as damage is taken with a maximum of 999%. As this percentage rises, the character in question is knocked further away by attacks. When a character is knocked out, they lose a stock or point depending on the type of match. The two types of matches are time matches, which are point-based, and stock matches, which are lives-based. This is the general foundation of Smash Brothers, and it's only gotten more technical from here. But that's later. For now, it's time to talk about the modes in this game. There's one player mode, more often known as classic mode, your arcade mode of the game. You pick your character, the amount of lives you want, and what difficulty you want to play on, and then you find 11 battles against the initial eight characters, Metal Mario, 30 copies of the cast of this game known as the Fighting Polygon Team, and then the final battle against Master Hand, where the rules change and you actually have to bring down this thing's HP. During your trek, you will participate in three bonus stages, break the target, targets, and obstacle course based around the character you play as, where you must seek and destroy 10 targets, board the platforms, same verse same as the first, just replace breaking targets with landing on top of platforms, and race to the finish, a bonus game I honestly miss. You have to descend 5 floors as fast as you can while avoiding all the hazards. Each stage you beat gives you points and takes them away depending on your actions. It is just a normal score feature, but the announcer will give you props for getting a million points and going above and beyond. The main draw of Classic Mode is that it's the way to unlock the four extra characters. If you beat Classic Mode without any continues on any difficulty, then you will unlock Jigglypuff. If you beat Classic Mode with three lives and no continues on the normal difficulty or higher, you will unlock Ness. If you beat Classic Mode in 20 minutes or less with no continues, you will unlock Captain Falcon. And if you clear Break the Targets with all eight initial characters, then you will unlock Luigi. In terms of other modes, there's Training Mode, which is self-explanatory. You can play Break the Targets and Board the Platforms whenever you want. And lastly, there's Versus, where you can fight up to three AI opponents or against friends in a free-for-all or team battle. You can change the rules, the type of match, and fool around on eight stages, with a ninth stage being unlockable if you beat classic mode with all eight initial characters and play on each stage. 
And that's it. God, it's so barren. No all-star mode, no event matches, no coin battle, not even stamina mode. It's pretty lacking, and the only thing you'll really be doing in this game is replaying classic mode. And the enjoyment I get from that runs its course after a while. This is a pretty decent soundtrack, comprised of original pieces and remixes. Oddly enough, it decides to have brass as the main instrument for remixes and percussion to be the main instrument for the original tracks. But even with this odd stipulation, there are still some great tracks in this game. Some of which include Sector Z, Bonus game. Dreamland. Meta Crystal. And final destination. Super Smash Bros. is the most lacking out of the franchise. It is the first game, and while it's still decent, it's a game that has little in terms of replayability. And nowadays, its novelty factor of Nintendo characters crossing over is kind of moot now that we have characters like Cloud, Mega Man, and Pac-Man in Smash Bros. So yeah, Smash Bros. did a good job at laying the foundation, and if you weren't me and actually had friends to play this game with, I'm sure the minimal amount of content wasn't a problem for you. But as a loner and a weirdo that values a bunch of content in my games, no matter how dumb it is, I'm sorry, but it's just not doing it for me. Anyways, that's all I gotta say about Super Smash Bros. As always, let me know what you guys think about this game, and hey, Smash Ultimate's coming out tomorrow. Are you excited? Who are you gonna main? Which out of the 12 newcomers are you happy about this time around? Let me know the answers to any of these questions, but only if you want to. Thank you all so much for watching, be safe out there, and I will see you guys next time. Take care.